You're listening to Health Professional Radio with Wayne Buckler. My guest today is Chris Sparks. Chris is the Executive Officer at Assistive Technology Suppliers Australia Incorporated. Now, that's an association. Let's find out what it does. Chris, welcome to Health Professional Radio. And good morning, Wayne. Tell me about the association. Our association kicked off back in 2000 um, to represent a, a fairly unique corner of the Australian healthcare industry. Um, those people that supply assistive technology, previously referred to as aids and equipment. So it's, it's everything from wheelchairs and uh, a senior's rollator through to um, uh, home care beds, pressure care, lifting devices, um, motor vehicle modifications, etc. Now, what's the role of the association? Our role really is to take what is primarily a, an industry of small to medium-sized enterprises and try and galvanise their knowledge and expertise to work with government to develop better policies in this area. Um, a significant proportion of assistive technology is government funded and given the experience and expertise of, of the importers, wholesalers, manufacturers and retailers, we think we have a lot to offer in, in terms of, of helping the government get things right. And it is important when you deal with government that, that you recognise their firm preference for dealing with a single voice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, before ATSA really started to engage with government, it was very difficult for individual businesses to to uh, to get a hearing um, to any great degree because of the obvious conflicts of interest. Um, and ATSA has provided that vehicle and uh, has been quite successful in a variety of areas. So it's a membership-based organisation, the, the members of those suppliers of the technology? Yes, we have... Um, more than a hundred members now um, nationally, which we think is almost a third of the businesses dedicated to assistive technology uh, in this country. Um, and they all pay to be members and they pay a, a varying fee based on the size of their organisation. Um, and they also, importantly, agree to abide by our industry code of, uh, code of practice. You're listening to Health Professional Radio with Wayne Buckler. I'm talking with Chris Sparks. Chris is the Executive Officer at, well, we'll call it ATSA for short as we have a chat, but I'll tell you what it is in the long form. It's the Assistive Technology Suppliers Australia Incorporated, and this is a member-driven association. And Chris, if it's got a third of the potential members as members, that's really a representative voice. No one could complain about you not having an adequate input into that. It is. It's it's quite substantial, and also we have a a very open door policy, Wayne, so that most of our industry events, our consultations, the information that we send out, it goes to both members and non-members. There's a small but significant segment of our industry who, due to uh, religious affiliations, uh, do not join um, associations like ours, but uh, they will support us in many ways. So we think it's important that we keep our door open to, uh, to as many businesses so we can hear from as many players as possible. Now, Chris, most of our audience are, are clinicians of one type or another. We um, have a lot in acute care and some in aged care. What's the takeaway message for them today as a result of having this chat with you? Well, I, I think the, the, the critical thing that we struggle to get across is that the provision of assistive technology is primarily a services-based industry. And time and time again, we see governments always with an eye to savings and efficiency shape their procurement initiatives as if they're buying widgets, not services. So, unfortunately, you can't treat assistive technology as if you're sourcing cafe bar cups or, or paper clips, for instance, because depending on the complexity of the technology, there's an extremely high service component. And that has been that message ha hasn't always been easy to, uh, to get across. That's a perspective that I hadn't considered, but as you explain it, it certainly makes sense to me. Now, Chris... I understand you also do a big public event, the Daily Living Expo. Yeah, it, it's we morphed the name uh, last year, Wayne, to uh, more reflect current terminology and the push towards the NDIS in Australia. Um, so it's now known as the Independent Living Expo. Mm -hmm. We very much reinvigorated it uh, in 2015 with events in both Sydney and Brisbane with a strong focus on consumers of assistive technology and their, and their family. 
Um, so each, we stage it each year. It alternates between Sydney and Melbourne. It's always in May. And uh, next year's event in 2016, we will be returning to the Melbourne showground. And Sydney this year, we got over 2,000 people over the two days attending. It was, it is by far the largest event of its type uh, in Australia. Um, brings together over 100 exhibitors, and we run a, a clinical education program where allied health practitioners can also get continuing development points. And and I guess if you are a uh, a clinician in this area, you could spend an awful lot of time visiting the showrooms of 100 exhibitors, or you could <laughs> pop over to the ex- exhibition for the afternoon. Look, absolutely. It's it's uh, it's a rare opportunity for uh, health practitioners and also those with disability or seniors who perhaps need something special to improve their independence to turn up. It's, it, the events are completely free. There's free on-site parking um, and see pretty much the cream of the crop uh, all in one location. Hey Chris, my favourite question in every interview is about misconceptions. Is there a misconception amongst your customers, clients, members, patients that drives you nuts and keeps you awake at night? Well, as I alluded to earlier, Wayne, the, the idea that uh, services are, uh, are not a significant part of our industry is a, a constant battleground for us. Combined with the, the fact that um, prices in Australia are high. Now, you know, we've delved into this for many, many years and Fortunately, the Queensland Competition Authority in 2014 did a deep dive into the pricing of assistive technology in Australia, which we encouraged and supported. It was a completely independent examination, and they looked, did a, uh, a far-reaching study and proved that compared with similar markets, Australia is in fact one of the lowest cost countries in the world, which for a population of 22 million, uh, so distant from the major European and American marketplaces, where most of the AT is now manufactured. That's a pretty amazing fact. It is. It's surprising. And I can understand why it's a misconception. Let's let's hope we can dispel a little bit of that misconception today amongst our listeners. Let's hope so, Wayne. Chris, it's been a pleasure having you with us today. How can people get in touch with you? The easiest way is always via the web. Um, and our website is simply atsa, A-T-S-A, dot O-R-G dot A-U. There's links in that to our expo sites for those who would be interested. Um, there's also some uh, policy papers which we developed to try and educate people new to the assistive technology uh, workspace and marketplace in Australia on uh, the ins and outs. And they're, they're all short and punchy. They're a good brief read. Now, because I'm always getting in trouble for saying domain names and URLs without sufficient warning, I'll say it again www.atsa.org.au The one. If you've just missed my conversation with Jeff Sparks, the Executive Officer at Assistive Technology Suppliers Australasia, then the good news is we have a transcript for you. On our website at www.hpr.fm, there's a transcript of this interview. There's also a SoundCloud archive and a YouTube archive where you can hear the full interview again. My name's Wayne Buckler. You're listening to Health Professional Radio.